So people often ask me about where does Toby sleep on nights like last night when it was snowy? Well, I'm gonna break it down for you guys in today's video, which is sponsored by my friends at Open Farm. Now, if we wanna catch him sleeping still, we gotta probably sneak up on him. I think he's gonna hear us. Is he still sleeping in his house? There he is. <laughs> hey, buddy. Good morning. How are you doing? <laughs> we caught you napping in your house. That's right. Oh, good to see you, buddy. How are you? Oh, you feel so warm and toasty. So yeah, here on our farm, we have Toby Dog, who is a livestock guardian dog. That means that his job is to stay out here 24 seven, guarding our ducks and geese and chickens. Now, because he's outside 24 seven, and we live here in Northern Vermont, where you know getting negative 20 degree temperatures isn't unusual. People often wonder, how does he stay toasty and how does he stay warm? Which is a really great question because making sure that the welfare of my buddy here is well taken care of is super important to me. I seriously love this dog with all of my heart and I would feel horrible if I didn't think he was actually very happy with his living conditions. And to be quite honest, it's actually taken me a while to figure out what are the optimal living conditions for a livestock guardian dog, particularly in the winter? Release the Quackers! You know, when Toby Dog first came to the farm as a puppy, I had him living inside of here. I would close him up at night so no animals could harm him or harass him. He had a little dog house that he would sleep in. And for the first couple of months of his life here on the farm, that worked pretty well. But as Toby Dog matured and started to get access to the farm full time 24 seven, he started to need a way to come and go as he pleased. And I also found that he didn't actually like staying inside that shed. You know, I would often come out here and find him sleeping in a variety of places, whether it be underneath the duck house, like you see right there, or even just out here in the snow, like he would never be sleeping in his house. And so to rectify that situation, I decided to undertake an experiment where I would build him a brand new dog house that was, you know, the right size for him, that would give him plenty of space, and would keep him warm. And that's ultimately how I came up with the igloo house, which you can see the remnants of right here. And I basically took a large IBC fluids container and cut a hole in it and so made it like just like a little warm place that he could go into and hang out. The only thing is he never ever used it. He hated it. What are you doing? You playing with your friend Ginny? I think he can see you, Jin. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an expert, but I don't think you're hiding behind that fishnet. You two are adorable, you know that? What happens if I take this away, Ginny? Oh, come here, Jin. You're such an adorable little shoulder cat, you know that? Are you gonna try to climb up on your post again? Can you do it? I don't know if you guys saw that last video where she was doing pull-ups on this bar. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get her to do it again. No, <laughs> she's learned her lesson. She knows she can't climb on it. She might try to climb on this though. Yeah, you like your little catwalk? This lets you get good perspective on the farm, huh? Rise and grind, chickens. Chickens are never happy about snow at all. Hey, how's it going there, Shakira? You're looking good since your new feathers came in. I think Ginny Barncat likes to stalk the chickens from up here. She walks along the chicken wire. Yeah, these chickens are not sure what to do here. Come on out, guys. You'll find some food pretty soon. And Jeannie, you gonna make the leap? You gonna come join me? You can do it, be bold. Fortune favors the bold barn cat. <laughs> Good job, girl. <laughs> but after observing Toby for a little while and talking to some friends who are expert in livestock guardian dogs, I realized that there were some real fatal flaws when it came to the old doggy igloo. And the biggest thing is livestock guardian dogs like Toby really depend on their sense of smell and hearing to detect danger. And when he's in a plastic structure like that, there's no good air circulation um, for picking up scents and there is no good, um, you know, ability to hear sounds like it distorts the sounds. And so 
he really didn't like it. Now, once I realized that the ice cube house was kind of a failure, I actually went back to the drawing board to redesign a new house for Toby. One that would actually be suitable, one that would actually work for him well for the long term. And that's how I ended up with the duplex design. This type of dog house is built for a dog like Toby Dog. You know, basically it's like an eight by six deck that has a pretty good sized house in it down below. It even has this upper deck structure, which Pablo and the other barn cats like to use. And they've got like climbing and scratching posts. It works out pretty well for everybody here on the farm. You're probably wondering though, how does an open dog house like this work for a dog like Toby? And I will give you a quick tour of some of the great features I built into this thing in a minute. But before I do, I wanna actually feed Toby Dog and take a minute to talk about our video sponsor, Open Farm. Now, I'm not sure if you guys know this about Toby Dog, but he's actually a very picky eater. And when it comes to getting him to eat dog food, it's actually really, really hard. You know, over the years, I've bought various forms of kibble and oftentimes he'd waste like half of it because he just wouldn't be interested in it. But one of the best strategies I've found to actually getting your dog interested in dry food is using what's known as a topper. A topper is like that little extra zhuzh or spice or variety that you add to your dog's food and meal. Add a little bit of spice. And one of the reasons why I love Open Farm so much is they have all sorts of different humanely sourced toppers that you can add to your dog's meal. You know, they have gently cooked wet food you can add on top of the meal. They have the freeze dried raw food that you can use where you just add a little bit of water and it turns into probably Toby's favorite thing on the planet to eat. Open Farm makes these uh, packages of bone broth and I'm gonna be adding it to Toby's breakfast. And by the way, Pablo, the bone broth is good for both dogs and cats. So as far as the bone broth options for today, we have three of them. We have grass fed beef bone broth, we have harvest chicken bone broth, and we have homestead turkey bone broth. And just like all of Open Farm's other humanely sourced forms of dog food, the bone broths all come from humanely sourced farms. They come from farms that aren't using antibiotics. And so you can feel really good about what you're feeding your furry best friend. And speaking of my furry best friend, he's kind of annoyed with me right now because he knows I'm about to feed him, but he's wondering why I'm taking so long to talk. So let's make up his breakfast for today. You know, for example, like yesterday, I gave him this very same turkey dog food, but I put some of the freeze dried raw stuff on there. Ginny, get out of there. And I bet you tomorrow, probably what I'll do is I'll take a package of the wet food and mix it in right on top. Since he's got turkey uh, dry food here today, I think I'm gonna go with the turkey bone broth to feed him. Just twist this open and just give it a squirt here. You know, I actually like to warm these up inside the house and then when I bring them out for Toby, it's like the perfect thing on a cold day like today. Even though Ginny is super jealous of this. I'll give it a minute or so just to let it marinate. I suggest you let that one marinate, 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 marinate. Look at that. You know, using toppers is also a really affordable way to like make your food budget go a little further. Because as you guys know, dry dog food is always much cheaper than the wet stuff. But if you use like a topper like the Open Farm Bone Broth, it's a great way to get your dog absolutely in love with the meal. Look at Toby. He's licking his lips, he's ready to go. He's not even gonna share any of this with Pablo. Pablo's gonna like watch and try to hone in on it. And Toby Dog's gonna be like, back off, buddy. <laughs> and he's like, Ginny, you stay away from my meal. This has bone broth in it. I'm not sharing any of it. If you wanna get Open Farm for your favorite furry friend, whether it be a dog or a cat, check out the link down below in the description of this video. And if you use the code GOLDSHAW, you're gonna get 15% off your order. And like I said, our cats like Open Farm just as much as Toby Dog. Jeannie, do you want me to try to add Open Farm to your cat food this morning? I bet she probably does. All right, now as Toby Dog is munching away on his favorite Open Farm, which, oh my gosh, you've already crushed this thing, buddy. <laughs> Look at that. Um, let me talk about his house. Because to a lot of folks, this probably doesn't look like the ideal dog house. You see, what I've learned in trying to build a dog house for Toby is that he actually doesn't like to be sealed in. So like if there was a door on the outside of that house, he would be a lot less likely to use it. But what he does really like about this house is the fact that it has a window so he can look out and see what's going on around the farm. He also likes the fact that it has this little porch and roof because he'll spend a lot of time sitting out here, you know, not inside the house, but just like on the deck. It's a structure that allows for him to have pretty good visibility around the entire farm. Even the placement of the house lets him see the duck house pretty directly. 
You can also see where the geese are for the winter. You can see where the chickens are, but then he's also not too far from the pasture or from the woods. That central location is exactly the type of thing he's looking for when he's trying to figure out if everything's okay or if there's a threat on the farm that he needs to go investigate. But by the looks of it right now, I bet he's going to investigate taking a poop. <laughs> yeah, I was right. He likes to go poop over by the cows. So what I've found is giving him a housing situation that offers him maximum visibility is probably the most important thing. Now, the other thing that folks are probably wondering is, well, doesn't he get cold? And the reality is no, because he's got this special double layer fur coat on and it keeps him really nice and toasty. It's very similar to like what a Siberian Husky, you know, like the dog sledding dogs have. And so coldness is really not an issue for him. The bigger issue is making sure he can stay dry making sure he can stay out of the wind. And then sometimes ice will form in his paws. And so to treat that, I'll often put musher's wax, which is like the same thing that like the dog sled racers use on their dogs in between his toes. It's sort of like a waxy, oily substance that helps from ice clumps like forming in between his toes. And that soft, soft coat keeps you so nice and toasty. In fact, Toby's bigger problem is not so much dealing with the uh, cold of winter, but the hot of summer. Because he often has the risk of overheating a little bit in that situation. Ginny, what are you doing? Exploring the ice bucket? Well, you can come with me. I'm going to go check on the geese. So yeah, our geese have been, you know, doing really well in their winter shelter. I'm probably going to move the chickens in there in the next week or so so that I have all those animals in one spot. Let's head in and check on everybody, huh? Good morning, geeseys. You can go outside if you want. It's funny, they've been so happy inside here that they're usually not going outside. Oh, you just spilled all your food. Come here, bud. You know how to get in. Come on. Come on, Toby. Toby, come. Good boy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's a special access door that if Toby wants to come inside, he can. I know some of you guys are probably wondering, does Toby ever like to go inside here and hang out? And I'd say the answer is no. I mean, I've caught him coming in here once or twice, but for the most part, I don't think he likes the noise and chaos of the geese. You two got separated from the rest of your crew. And the ducks are very curious about the goose area. Uh, don't try to fly over that. Watch, I'll show you how to get back to your friends. They're still learning about that fence. There you go, that's how you get back inside. Toby, you're blocking the door from the goose. She's trying to get inside. She's a little scared. There you go. <laughs> yeah, they don't like to separate. kind of bringing me back to the way I used to run the lawn. But unfortunately, since the hose line started to freeze up and we haven't had temps above freezing in, I don't know, nearly a week, this is the only way to get water out to the cattle. Oh, you guys are thirsty, I know, hang on. Here comes the water. I need it! So as far as how the cattle are doing, they're pretty good. They're actually in their last pasture move until I bring them inside the barn. But I still haven't quite brought them into the barn just yet. I really haven't needed to, and it hasn't been like an imperative. We've had snow, we've had cold, but they've handled it really well. And I've said this in other videos, but part of why I'm doing it this way is I wanna see what they can handle in the future because I don't know, I'm thinking about my long-term barn situation for the cattle, like when the herd expands, like what I want to ultimately do. This setup I have over here in the barn is only temporary. You know, the other day I actually came out here with the tractor and brought them another fresh bale of hay. They're going through it. Some folks have said I need to get a feeder. I actually do have bale feeders. You can see them over there by the barn. I just haven't wanted to move them out to the pasture and then have to move them over there. So I've been just putting them right on the ground here out in the pasture. It's fine. They waste a little bit of hay when they do that, but overall I haven't found it to be too bad. What's going on, Kurt? How are you doing? How about you, Audrey One? You good? Everybody's looking really happy and healthy. And they're getting so comfortable with me. I will admit, 
I am nervous about the move that I have to make where I take them outside that gate and run them down that alleyway into the barn. It should go fine. And I've been working on bucket training them so much that I think they will just follow me very easily. I've also done so many pasture moves with them lately that like it's just sort of a routine for them. So that's why I'm optimistic about it. But that said, you know, stuff could go wrong and I have no perimeter fence out there and so they could escape, which would be really, really bad. But you're not gonna do that to me, are you, Audrey? I know you wouldn't, Kurt. You like your biscuits too much. Ooh, what's Toby hearing? Something got his attention. What's the matter, Tobes? Something got your hair up? This is why you need a livestock guardian dog. To keep constant vigilance around your farm. I don't see anything, Toby. But I trust your instincts. You know that, buddy? You guys want some biscuits? Here you go, Kurt. Take another one. There you go. Don't eat my hand. And I start petting you. That's what I want to see. Nope. You're not behaving. Yeah, with Kurt, I'm finding I have to be very careful. Like, he gets so aggressive and excited about the biscuits that sometimes he starts swinging those horns, and I gotta watch myself. Here, Ariel, I'm gonna give you some as well. They love these alfalfa cubes. And I was actually worried that I might have to feed my cattle grain because you need something to have like a treat to like motivate them. But these alfalfa cubes have worked great. Annabelle's taking them from my hand too lately. Here you go, Annabelle. You want one? Good girl, good girl, Annabelle. Annabelle, Ariel, and Anna of Green Gables are probably the three sweetest cows. Audrey one can be a little bit of a bully. For some reason, she doesn't want to take it from my hand. There you go, girl. Good job. <laughs> Ginny's always so curious. It's actually funny that I've got all the parts of the farm so close together now. I've been so used to having the cattle way away. But now Ginny just kind of troops over here. I think the cattle are getting more used to her. They'll definitely have to get used to each other once they move into the barn because Ginny spends a lot of time in that barn. Now, one other dog housing question I'm sure you guys are going to ask is, what am I going to do when our puppy gets here? So as most of you know, we have a livestock guardian dog puppy coming from my friends over at Prancing Pony Farm. And the plan is for her to come here in February. When she does, I'll actually take that same dog house that I use for Toby Dog and I'll set it up right in here and let her stay in this shed. In the earliest days, I'll probably close her in here at night. As she gets older, I'll make like a little dog run for her so she can be around the farm but not directly engaging with the farm animals. And then even as she gets a little older and I can trust her more, I'll let her out. Oh, also training her to this shed is gonna be super important because ultimately when she starts going into her first couple of heats, I don't want her to breed with Toby. And so I'm gonna be keeping her in this little penned in area to keep her from getting pregnant too young and too soon. I really wanna make sure I do all the necessary health screens and I wanna make sure she reaches the right age. And so uh, that will be something I'm working on too. Toby dog, what do you got there? What do you got? Drop it. Hey, drop it. Oh, you ate a cow biscuit, you stole one? All right, you can have it. You know, Toby Dog loves his open farm, but he also loves alfalfa cubes. So I don't know, take that for whatever it's worth. So yeah, that's how we think about dog housing here at Goldshaw Farm. If you want to learn more about our farm, check out this next video. I think you're going to like it, or at least YouTube's algorithm thinks you're going to like it.